So finally, we'll take a look at a PS CAD simulation associated with the worked example. And so you've got, again, you've got a 300, um, 350 millihenry kind of a load inductor, if you want to call it that. You've got the stray capacitance or the inner winding capacitance, whatever um, this represents here. You've got the source inductance, you've got the source model, and then this is the location of the circuit breaker, obviously. And because PSCAD doesn't give you a way of entering in the initial conditions, we're going to have to run the circuit uh, in order to get it into a steady state first. And so what I'm doing in this case is I've got the source set up where it has a voltage input time constant of 0 0.02. So basically when the simulation starts up, it starts off and it kind of ramps up. And then eventually what happens is we get into a steady state condition with the load switched in. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch it off and we're going to switch this off in a way where we get the chopping of, of the one amp. So most of what you see on the left is just getting the circuit into steady state. So if I would just go ahead and run this um, you know, we can go ahead and see the values get populated on the screen. And I've got a pretty small time step set up because things occur rather rapidly around the chop. And so I just want to make sure I can capture that accurately. And what we could see as far as the stress on the circuit is we basically see it sort of oscillating back and forth. Um, you know, we calculated this, this change before and, and basically what this is, is since we don't have any damping in the circuit, basically what it does is it's just a, an oscillatory response in this case. We do see a little bit of damping going on but it's not very much and where that damping comes from, it comes from the model of the circuit breaker. We've actually got a little bit of resistance associated with that. Uh, so we do is get a slight bit of uh, damping, but not, not very much. The other thing that's kind of interesting to take a look at is what's happening in terms of the chop. I need to adjust this scale on here where we're going from 0.11 to um, 0.115. All right, so what you see in this case is you see the current going through the switch. Now you can see if the current has a peak value of about 70 amps, there's no way you could see what's going on as far as the chop in this case. So that's why I basically run a separate plot with a separate set of scales, where basically what I could see is I could see this one amp chop, the, the basically this value um, is, 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 basically changing instantaneously in this case um, as, as far as a solution. One other thing I'm doing is I'm also plotting what the capacitor current's doing. And uh, what you could do in PSCAD is you could actually turn plots on and off. If you click on the click on the plot, you know, you can actually, you know, turn individual plots on and off. So this is the case where you can go ahead and you can see the inductor and capacitor current. You'll notice that once the capacitor and inductor are isolated from the source, that the currents are 180 degrees out of phase. Um, but if you look at what's going on with the um, capacitor current, you notice you've got the chop of one amp in this case for the circuit breaker. You can see that this gets picked up basically immediately by the capacitor. So that capacitor actually sees minus one amp um, when, when the chopping action occurs. So, so you can actually see this from the simulation. One thing that was a little bit irritating about this particular simulation, I, I'll go ahead and post this up on the Moodle site, is that I could not get 
the building current chop in the model to work for whatever reason. So what I had to do instead of relying on the current chop in the model, um, and I'll have to send a note to PS CAD folks about this. I go ahead and let you open in any possible current, but then what I need to do is I need to get the circuit breaker timed exactly where the switching action occurs to the time corresponding to one ampere. And that's how I actually had to get this to work. So this was a little bit iterative where what I was doing is I was just kind of monitoring this current and trying to set the time to, to get the, the chop at the right instance. And what I was doing to double check that, again, if you right click, you can copy the data to the clipboard. You, you actually want to um, make sure when you copy this that you copy all. Um, yeah, copy all. Then you can paste that in a spreadsheet and you can just make sure you're you're getting the switching current at the at the right time. So anyway, this kind of matches up to the the first part that we did. Um, when you add the sorry about that. When you add the 10 ohm 10 kilo ohm resistance in the circuit, let me go ahead and readjust a few scales on here. Uh, then you can see the effect of the damping. Let me change this top plot. And note, I don't really want to see a lot of the high frequency cycles, so I'm really, I'm really narrowing this down. So now when I run this simulation, this is what I see, and I'm not going to go through and rerun this again, but basically what I see, I'm, I'm plotting both the source voltage and I'm plotting the bus voltage. You can see that the bus voltage is a little bit lower in magnitude than the source voltage. Uh, since we looked at that, I can go ahead and turn this off. Basically, this is showing me what's happening as far as the transit. You can see since we have that resistance in the circuit, the resistance is such that it really damps out rather fast. It actually goes a little bit negative, and this this matches up with what we got working this out by hand in the worked example. Then it swings back up positive, but all of a sudden it just it just really damps out very quickly to zero. You can see I, I do have the the switching action going on right here, where I, you can see the chop at one amp. So if you're, if you're doing this for homework, you know, make sure you show this zoomed in so I can double check to make sure you got the chopping model correctly. Again, what I needed to do, since I couldn't get the chop working in the circuit breaker model, I just had to come up with the exact time that that um, circuit breaker current was going to correspond to one. And, and then again, what's kind of interesting about this is to look at what's going on with the resistor current. And you can see this case in the, in the resistor current that you do see, you know, appreciable amount of current going through the resistor at the time of the chop. So it, again, it's the inductor current plus the resistor current that's going to match up to that one amp that gets chopped and that it gets instantaneously transitioned over to the to the capacitor. Um, so anyway, this this matches up pretty well as well. Now, while I've got this open. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is sort of the need to have this period of time where we get the simulation up to speed. And let's suppose I go back to this original example and let me change the time scale at the bottom again. Let's suppose I didn't have for the source, I didn't have this input time constant. What's going to happen? Let's suppose I set this to zero. So what this means is right away it, it starts up with the full value of the source voltage. So now when I run this, note before that the current before the switching event was symmetrical. Now when I run this, I'm 
I'm running so many plot values it, it takes a while to get this to start. Look what's going on with the current. Let me change the scaling factor on here a little bit. Note that I'm getting an offset in the current now. So the voltage is still swinging back and forth normally, but, but now I've got an offset in the current. Uh, basically what I've created is I've created another transit. And so because there's no damping in the circuit, there's no resistance in the circuit, uh, it never really damps out. Um, it just basically has a DC offset in there and that DC offset in there just stays in there indefinitely. So there's no way I could start my circuit simulation this way. So this is what I get if, if I don't put that um, time constant in the source value. And then as soon as I go back to the source and I put some type of a time constant in here, then I, I get everything to decay properly. And let, let's try something like 0 0.01 and see if that still works. Okay, so run it again. We'll see if this gets into steady state with a symmetric value or not. So it's, it's interesting that with that time constant, it's still, it's still a little bit asymmetric. There's still kind of a DC offset in there. And since I don't have enough resistance in the switch, um, you know, the switch actually has a small amount of resistance in it, 0 0.005. So it is providing some damping, but it's not really enough to get rid of that decay. And so basically what you guys need to do is make sure that you've got enough of a time constant where before you start your simulation your steady state value is going to be symmetric otherwise you, you might not get the right results and that's just kind of the nature of PSCAD is that the user is sort of responsible of getting to the right initial conditions okay so I think I'll go ahead and stop there um, and then um, say we'll continue our discussion of transits in the next lecture.